and you were telling me uh, about how you're using the computer. How do you use the learning passport in your studies? The learning passport. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will present this on the iPad. The learning passport is is a website. It's similar to Neo, but not because this comprises of both Zimsic and Cambridge. And the good thing about this, this, um, as you can see, I've logged into the subjects that I do business studies, computer science, and mathematics. In business studies, it can give me past papers, notes, and everything that I need to use. So this is exactly how we use the learning password. Zimsec was born out of Cambridge when we wanted to make the context Zimbabwe. I was part of the teams that were actually localizing. And if you look at it, Cambridge is easier than Zimsec. We are tougher on our students than Cambridge is. Why? Because we want them to compete internationally. And my child from Zimsek who has a C, you can't stand up to them when you go to higher learning. So please, parents, I'm talking to us now all as parents, let us be fully knowledgeable of what's happening. Because as I said, the Zimbabwe learning, we're saying Zimbabwe learning passport, to distinguish it from the six, six other countries who are piloting this. Because this is under the GIGA, um, an, an international GIGA strategy that wants to make sure that every school gets connectivity and can use that. Zimbabwe is one of the countries that was selected. And it is a pity to then discover that all our little uh, uh, stereotypes, all our little false classifications of exam systems and curricula are still with us. You want to get to, him, to, to, to Britain and find Zimsek being examined today. Mm -hmm. They don't need it. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who have got this illusion that we should leave our country and then go and be useful elsewhere. Yes, have your Cambridge, but Cambridge benefits. Yes. The Zimbabwe learning passport is for every child in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Because these are open source materials as well as our own curriculum materials mm -hmm. from all over the world. So the question of trusted sources child. <laughs> <laughs> but I can understand because it's us, the teachers, it's us, the parents who give you that wrong information. But as she says, if you look at it, it's a very rich granary. Yes. And it depends, doesn't matter what you are doing, you can get there, you will get the information. Yeah. Yes, um, my dear. Back here, I wrote the past papers and the mm -hmm. pieces that I've done for pieces. Mm -hmm. I find it quite helpful. Mm -hmm. It has even the syllabus notes that I need. It's a helpful platform. The fact that it's Zimbabwe, it so, helps me uh, to my hands, I hope we have <laughs> many of my colleagues here. Mawasi Epi. Liko Namuriko. Yes. yes, please. This is a free resource. During COVID-19, when we were all locked down and learning was not happening, government, through our ministry, then worked on these resources. And we then got help from uh, cooperating partners. And because as Zimbabwe, we were very ahead of busting COVID, we were beginning to work on strategies, radio lessons, whatever. We were then picked up as a country which was serious about education in emergencies. That's why we got onto the learning passport. So I get very hurt when at times I get to schools, I ask the head, they have never heard about the learning passport. And I say, so what will happen to my children? Oh my, thank you, at least you have it here, you are using it, but can we take full advantage? of it. And can we demystify curricula from other places? Atiba, Titichi, Taguti, education in Zimbabwe, Italy. Last month I was in uh, December. Yes. We were in South Africa. South Africa is crying for us to go and help them with their education system. Mm -hmm. Botswana took two directors from us to go and help them come up with their own curriculum. 
We are waiting currently for Namibia, they want to come as well. Lesotho is on its way. And yet it is us who actually look down upon our own education. Everybody else wants to find out what we are doing, how we are doing it. So please, as if we get any matter and then go. Anderson, as the world is going under, arise, you are a beacon in this land. Each structure at this school is made to look as Anderson. But tantamount to the human body, the students are the heart of the whole aggregate of Anderson. Intellectually, physically, socially, spiritually, and morally. Anderson, as the world is going under, arise, you are beacon in this land. Word of today, be careful for tomorrow's news. Anderson, as the world is going and arise, here yeah, beacon in this land. She welcomes her children to see a brighter day, introducing work program as a way of illuminating responsibility. Each child is located in a different area, such as horticulture, apiary, fishery, and hatchery, and many more. Of course, the engine to all this is teamwork. By teamwork, we mean totality and excellence through, through absolute merit. Charity was is going in there. We have learned that teamwork means a shared vision, but the Anderson we want has fashioned a way of diligent and a collaborative team. Anderson, Anderson, Victoria PD, God bless you, Anderson. The dream is in your hands. I tell Ruth Kingisha and Vanessa Havasian. We are proud to say that Anderson, through his students, has become an exceptional school. Amen. Uh, I will now ask Ro to give us a piece of his good music from the piano. Now, the piano is one of my favorite instruments. Unfortunately, growing up, I did not have time to really learn it. So I think sometime later today, I'll ask the young man to teach me how to play this instrument. Thank you.
We're going to listen to a beautiful piece of music from Tanyaka with the harmonica. Yes, one reason I am quite fond of music is because of the connection that is shown between an artist and their instrument. Now, I'd like to have a little pop quiz with the students. I am willing to offer a small prize of $5 to anyone who can tell me what the three most dominant colors on our uniform are and what they mean. Yes, okay, let's start with the young Form 1 right in front here. Alright, go on. <laughs> yes, so is there anyone else who is willing to take a shot at this one? Five dollars. Yes, all of it. Yes, that is correct. Uh, be sure to see me after this for your... Uh... Okay, okay, okay. Yes, you can come collect your money now.
Yes, so like all the way to say, blue stands for royalty, black stands for authority, and white stands for purity. Those are the three most dominant colors on our uniform. Yes, thank you, thank you. So students, make sure you know more about your school. You never know where or what it could get you in this lifetime. I will now ask the marimba band to give us another piece of their beautiful music.
The Mariba band will give us another piece of music. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you so much. Um, while we're standing, we are going to ask the choir to lead us in singing the national anthem with pride and vigor. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Church Choir. switching over to the school uh, anthem and uh, for those who um, have programs it's at the back you can sing along choir please lead us thank you Pastor Mapuza to come and give us a devotion and the opening prayer. Pastor, it's your time. Uh, 
greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is uh, my single privilege and honor for me to come and share from the Word of God on this our special day. I would like to say congratulations to Anderson High School. Uh, I would like us to consider a passage from the book according to John. And we are reading from the first chapter. And uh, we are reading the first five verses. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Today we have a privilege to uh, study a passage that was written by somebody whose education level was very low, somebody who could not show any accolades from school, or a person who only learned at the feet of Jesus, and that person is John the Apostle. He says from observing one a, a feature that you would find in the Gospel according to John is that uh, of particular interest to this writer was uh, 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 Jesus' interaction with uh, persons one on one. He rarely talks about events that happen when Jesus is talking to a multitude or addressing a multitude. He is more interested when Jesus is talking to people one on one. He says, uh, you would find him talking about Jesus talking to Nicodemus, Jesus interacting with uh, uh, the woman of Samaria. So that's what John was captivated with when he was uh, seeing Jesus. So after analyzing and synthesizing, when he is talking about Jesus, he says, what did I observe? in this man who was tra traversing uh, the streets of Jerusalem. He says, in him I saw the word. He was the word of God. And I understood that this word of God was once with God and was God. And he says of this word, everything that was created on my planet Earth was created through his agency. Verse number four says, in this man was life. And that life was the light of man. Verse number five says, uh, Light shineth in darkness, but darkness comprehended it not. So John here shows us that as we live on planet Earth, we seem to have a problem. Humanity seems to be in darkness. Why do we have schools? Why do we have education? Because we claim for it that education enlightens. Education brings light. There were many schools. There were the schools of Hillel those days. There were the schools of Shama. There were also the schools at Antioch. And there was a university at Alexandria. All these institutions were giving light. Why did we need a light that was coming from heaven? He says, as I look at Jesus, this man had life in him. And this life that he was uh, putting across every day as he was interacting with human beings. He was shedding the light that shines, the path that shines from planet Earth and ushers us into the glory of God. And he says, we have this darkness. He says, he says when this light came, but darkness could not comprehend it. He says, as you look at a human being with this problem of darkness, which education seeks to despair. You find that we also have a problem that there are chambers in the heart of men which education itself cannot enlighten. So that uh, those chambers, Jesus came to enlighten and to shed light. And also all other forms of education, sin has managed to dispel and to comprehend or to apprehend all other forms of light Sin has managed to say to it, it overshadows it, and it becomes like darkness. 
There is no type of light which has come into planet Earth which sin has not conquered. It is only this light that Jesus was bringing that the devil failed to apprehend, that he failed to overcome. It is the only light that when it shines in man, the man is transformed. I have never read uh, 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 of somebody who studied physics until they changed. Neither have, have I found somebody who has learned all the isms and the ologies of this world and they became a better person in terms of their relationship to God and also their relationship to men. It is only those that have studied at the light of Christ that are bettered before their standing before God and also before men. So that's why uh, uh, the pen of inspiration would say, in our attempt to educate, education, the work of redemption and that of education, they cannot be separated. They too go hand in glove. Because as we try to enlighten, to quicken the mind, so that it can uh, grasp the concepts that we uh, face daily or that are challenges each and every day, we should remember that man is facing a challenge that a class teacher cannot fully comprehend or fully despair. So those two cannot be separated. The work of redeeming men and the work of, of also educating them. The book of Acts will tell us, as the disciples were preaching, the learned rabbis would say, but we know these people, they are unlearned. They never attended schools. And they would wonder what has happened to these uh, villagers. And the answer would be, they have been with Jesus. The danger is that the teachers could not uh, teach. Jesus could quicken the mind and also impart knowledge. So he could do what a teacher could not do. That's why we say in the Adventist education circles, we say we need the light that comes from heaven and also the light that a teacher can shed. So these two cannot be separated and they go hand in glove. So I would say, as we are going around, we could hear, we could, uh, students were being challenged to say that uh, what we want to see, we want them to get educated and such as they are educated, they are able also to translate their education into tangible things. That is the work of education. Education should uplift us and education should take us to other levels. Maybe lastly is I challenge students. I am reminded of the words that were spoken by the first Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago when it was getting its independence. He addresses the students at independence to say, to your tender and loving hands, the future of this nation is entrusted. In your innocent hearts, the pride of this nation is enshrined. When you shall go back to your classes after independence, remember that you carry the future of Trinidad and Tobago in your school bags. As I talk to you, our students, the pride of this nation is in your heart and also to your tender and loving hands, its future is entrusted. May the torch continue to shine. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pause for a moment of prayer? <clears throat> to our holy and gracious Father who is in heaven, we are so grateful at this moment in time for the privilege that is ours before we can engage into the business of the day. We have the privilege of summoning you to be among us. How much we pray, Heavenly Father, that you be in our midst. What we, can we do, Heavenly Father, if you are not with us? May we be with us, Heavenly Father, everything that is going to be said and done here, may it be done to the glory of your name. When all is said and done, after school is done, after all work on planet Earth is done, may you give us a home in your kingdom where we shall dwell together with you. This is our sincere and humble prayer. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Anderson is a school that thrives upon prayer, and so as per expectations, we often want to begin our programs with... So as per expectation, we often want to start our programs with a word of prayer. So I'd like to thank the pastor for 
the words of encouragement that we have just received. Before I greet the students, I need to be assured of a very hearty response should I greet you. Am I assured of it? That doesn't sound promising, but I will continue anyway. Good afternoon, students. Afternoon. Good afternoon, students. Afternoon. Maybe some of you are not understanding me. Maswara say. No response. Yes, we would like to welcome you all, Anderson students, to this glorious day. I would like to ask the Anderson students to all stand where they are sitting. Please rise up. Yes, we would like to welcome you all and we are well aware that this day would not have been a success without your presence. So thank you all and I would like to give a special welcome to the Form 1s who have just joined the Anderson family. We trust that you have a great and happy day at Anderson. At Anderson for the rest of your stay here. Now, I will assure you one thing, and that is you have not made the wrong decision being here. This school will groom you up to be people who lead in society, to be people who take charge in society. And so with that, we welcome you all. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. This place is teeming with dignitaries and many faces. It's like the Africa who's who's who. And um, so at this juncture, I'm going to call upon the headmaster to unpack our audience so that we know who is who in front here and who is who amongst uh, our parents. And, and so thank you so much, uh, Mr. Headmaster. You may come forward. Morning, everyone here. My task this morning to introduce. Um, may I start off with our staff members who are here? May our staff members who are here, program play, may they stand up from wherever you are. I know they are playing various roles up and around the school. They are really there at the back. Staff members, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you sit down? These are the. Mm, They do the task, they are the foot soldiers. For us to be here, the students have done their part, and they also ice the, the students' part. I want to thank you staff members for whatever you are doing here to make this school a great school, and a school where the PA parents sometimes will visit only day like today. Our parents, you are so nice. You are so good. You are so dear to us. I was telling the students last night they were laughing at me, but I'm sure I meant it. I said, your parents are my parents too. So may, uh, may, may my parents stand up as we greet you. Yes. <laughs> parents, <laughs> thank you for your presence. You can sit down. I know it's not easy for you to, to, to come along and be here in this uh, uh, your busy schedules. From there on to also welcome our um, headmasters, fellow headmasters who are here, fellow teachers who are here, may you also stand up please. All our school heads from various schools. Thank you for dressing us and for being here. I want to proceed again to go on to our parents, so our SDC uh, here present. I've seen some of them here. The school chairman, Dr. Mugwise. Yes, and all other SDCs, the uh, chairpersons and uh, members who are here present as well. Thank you, Dr. Dina. Uh, let me introduce, may you, okay, be up with the chairman. I need to introduce you to our, to our visitors here. Chairman is uh, Dr. Mugwise. He's our school chairman. He drives the mantra, the answer we want. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Treasurer, Mr. S. Mutendi, who is also among us. I will proceed then to introduce our responsible authority. I will ask Mr. Goethe to do that for us. Joshua is. It's not even. Pastor Goethe. Oh, Pastor Goethe. May you please come in your sisters. <clears throat> this is Pastor Devele. See, Pastor C. Devele is the executive conference at the, at the Social Public Conference event. Thank you so much. Greetings to you all. I would like to introduce to you our team from the Responsible Authority. We have the higher organization. May all those who came from the higher organization stand from Zimbabwe Central Union Conference. <laughs> yes, we have Pastor Masigi Ize, who is the president of our union. Behind him, we have Pastor Mapuzo Gunota, the executive secretary. Then we have Sister Sitole, who is our CFO. Then we have our education director, Pastor Tapera. Thank you so much. We are happy that you are here. Then we have the Central Zimbabwe Conference team. Yes, we have Pastor Rukuni, is the president and the chairman of the school board. Yes. Uh, behind him is Pastor Chiso, in charge of stewardship. Next to Pastor Chiso is Pastor Spanda, in charge of personal ministries, that is in charge of evangelism. Speaking to you is Pastor David. Thank you so much. Maybe before I proceed, can I have the privilege of introducing Mrs. Mkashaka, who is a minister. I do, she is the man that we should approve. <laughs> thank you for your support. Yes, thank you so much. <clears throat> May I go again, go ahead and introduce to you our DSI, uh, Mr. Mastrogozera. I will ask him to introduce our administration personnel directors who are here. Thank you. Thank you very much, our host head, Mr. Mukashanga. Uh, I will start off by introducing the members of our district office who are here, Gweru well, District Office. We have come for this function. I have the education inspector responsible for mathematics at district office and even at provincial office, Mr. Shawa. And then you can raise up your head, Mr. Shawa, they may want to see you. And then the education of uh, the education inspector responsible for primary schools, uh, Mr. Swanda or Muramri. You can raise up your hand, Muramri. I also have uh, the Human Resources Officer, Madam Sumani. She's the one who says to it that we have enough teachers in the district. She sees the appointment of the teachers and she also see the, she sees their termination. Madam Sumani, may raise up your hand. She has been accompanied to this function by uh, Sister Shero. Uh, you can raise up your hand. Right, you may take a seat. 
These are the people responsible for Gweru district who are here. Uh, then I will come over to other officers from all the eight districts. Uh, education inspectors who may be here from all our eight districts. Mberemka, Shishawane, Kwekwe, Churumanzu, Gokwe North, Gokwe South, all the education officers who may be around, you may stand so that you are seen also. Yes, we have uh, about three. Thank you very much, the education inspectors at provincial office. You may take your seats. Then I've got my colleagues in district schools, inspectors.
We lost, last this week, we lost a great uh, traditional music icon. And everybody were wondering, is anybody going to follow in the first steps? We have Chantel, form two, form one. She's going to tell us that, she's going to present to us a song, a Mbira song, to show us that Stella Chueche died, but the music still lives on. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Chantal. So much. Um, currently, the world, the world of war, has been taken uh, uh, back by the drone. And when people talk about drones, you think about Russia, you think about Ukraine, you think about America. But, ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure you, drones are already here, and we are training our students how to use. Uh, drones. Just a demonstration from one of our Form 1 students as the headmaster receives his speech. He has forgotten it, but the boy has picked it from his office and is going to send um, the speech using a drone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the future of education. Straight from his headmaster's office, and it has landed. So, headmaster can have his speech. to demonstrate how the drone can carry the headmaster back to his seat. So, so because of time, <laughs> we will not uh, have that. So, 
Mr. Gashanga, your time sir. Speak to us. Thank you very much, the end of ceremonies. The Premier Secretary, the Minister of the Department of Secondary Education, Chief Directors, uh, PSME, the PED for Midlands, Mr. Ma J. Machimbira. No more girls do. But so then, I don't be guy. <laughs> I remember what the was happening saying, if I get the home, I'll tell my parents, give me the materials. I can, I can give you the, 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 the bill, what do you call it, the, the, the big Q for, yes, bill of quantities. I can give you, I ask the parents, give me the bill of quantities and I'll construct the, 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 the big one. The parents who are here today, when the years change, you care when they come two upwards in this school, or those who left in the last day, the upper six and the home, home four, you can go to them and say, my, uh, can you do what they did? They don't say you can do. We are moving on to become an industrial hub. So their heads are also involved in making sure they are food on the table. 
Our brothers will then leave others. And rest assured, none of them will be better. They know how to survive. They get a number of skills. From the current environment, environment and all other skills they may need to survive. Already they are now involved in disaster management through our first aid kit, uh, uh, skills and uh, training which are happening in, in this school. We are actually moving along very well. We want also to thank violations from our, from our parents. They said earlier on that the chairman led in these donations, whereby the other things, uh, even when, when the COVID hit us in 2019, the chairman was, he, 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 he took time to send us loads of the extension of material, including the acetylamines and drugs and so on. I also want to thank all the people who are friends of the school. They are doing a lot to keep us close. Thank you so much. And here I want to thank everyone who is here present. Thank you for the support you are giving to us. We are continue doing that. And we are not even doing well when they expect you to advise us. We have an open door policy where anybody, parents, students, who want something done in the school, they always do that. Our policy is simply that if you can't get your things done within three days by the various factors in the school, make sure you inform the head. It also depends on the idea of the matter. But other matters, like whatever needs to be done in our structures, they use them. When they fail to be get a response within three days, they also advise the head and say, Let master, we will inform this structure, but this is not moving. What can be done? And from that level, decisions are met. Either do it better than them, or to check with our SDC to come in, or whatever is supposed to make it happen, and they make those things happen. Otherwise, Thank you very much for your support. We would like to thank the head for delivering such a marvelous speech. And you know, to have someone of such importance, someone who looks over the institution taking time off his busy schedule to talk to each and every one of his students is an honor. So with that, we'd like to thank you. I would also like to say, as the head boy of Anderson High School, I am proud to have received an award of such pedigree during our year of leadership. And we hope that in years to come, we'll be invited yet again to attend an event in which the school will be awarded a medal. I'll now hand over this time to you, Mr. Munazi. Thank you so much. Um, it's time to celebrate. We need the energy from the choir. We need the energy from the choir. Choir, please energize us. Energize us. Thank you so much. I want to celebrate. You may sing along, please join me. This song was written on...
One challenge I bring to this school through and through. And the first song that you did, the great Hallelujah chorus, yes, it was done extremely well, but because you didn't perhaps create that song, there was something slightly missing, because we're now comparing with other renditions that you have had, and you failed to do a standing ovation, because you are aware there was another choir that maybe did this particular part better than this choir. But when they came up with the song that was created this Tuesday, which is two days ago, then I said, yes, we have a lot of talent in this school. <laughs> because music itself is poetry. And I was listening to the lyrics and saying, okay, the lyrics are to celebrate great. And head, I'm asking you this question not only to yourself, but to other heads, because I seem to see a lost chance for assessing these children in their continuous assessment. Because these children saw a problem. On Thursday, we have the secretary's merit award. And we would want to entertain the people on that day. How do we do it? And they researched and came up with this song and then came and demonstrated their innovation. Who is giving them marks for their color? <laughs> what will happen now is the teachers will go and sit down and say, do a, music, a color in music. Why didn't we accredit these children? The music teacher will have to think about it because this was a group presentation and they should get a mark for this. Director of ceremonies or directors of ceremonies. I see there is the senior director and uh, future directors uh, in terms of our head boy. Is that the head girl? No, I, I met the head girl earlier. Okay, who said she's in charge of me today? So, <laughs> um. The Chief Director for Primary, Secondary, and Non-Formal Education, Mrs. Kaira, in the absence. Uh, and Directors Guse and Joel and other head of staff. PED for Midlands, Sir Chimbira and your Deputy PEDs and Provincial Staff. The representative of the Minister of State, our DDC. Guerrero District Schools Inspector, District Schools Inspector, Mr. Tima And something that fascinated me when I got here was that when you were raising the flag, there was 
the fly past and I said, wow. <laughs> and it looks like uh, someone is aware that a lot of important things are happening here, so they keep actually having fly pasts. <laughs> District schools inspectors and education inspectors from other districts, or seven other districts, I want to appreciate the DSIs for coming to support their friend, as we say, under our Better Schools program Zimbabwe, this is a strategy for learning, for going to apply what we have learned from our neighbor. It is, after all, our people who say when mountains are doing their mountain business, they do share their mist, isn't it? As the narrator say, so this is one strategy where all these colleagues of mine who stood up here, thank you very much, heads of schools for coming. Anderson. In the long run, but let's come up with our own the schools we want. They've borrowed from the uh, vision of the African Union, the Africa we want. And they've said they want to contextualize it and say the Anderson we want. Go back also and work with your SDCs, your communities, and come up with the, what school do I see, that do I remember seeing here? Uh, the lower Guelo mission that we want. We are Zotia. You know, uh, you will never stop being Jara because when I met you, you were a Jara at that time, isn't it? <laughs> Representatives of NAF and NASH, and especially our representative from the National Association. We appreciate your being here. The hand of Anderson Adventist High School, Mr. Sim Ukaspanga, and your deputy, Njini. Uh, Heads of other schools, as I have already acknowledged you. The School Development Committee chairperson and your entire executive. Thank you very much, Dr. Mkwisi. The responsible authority for this great school, Central Zimbabwe Union Conference and Central Zimbabwe Conference of the Seventh Day Adventists, as led by Pastors Rukuni and Dr. Masikize and Lawongawana Leswabo Nileo. Thank you so much for supporting your school. Representatives of teacher unions, our partners in education and the corporate world parents of the beautiful learners who are here. I saw you in your numbers and I want to thank you because some parents have posted their children to this school and forgotten totally about them. They will wait for them to come by bus or whatever and then as soon as they come and then as soon as they come that's what some of you are known for. Just hands who can wear any five loaves, can have a bag, can have a joy, if you can have a bag, you know, and a pass. But you have come. You are investing in their futures. You are investing in this country's future. Thank you so much, parents. Our beautiful teachers and pupils and parents, guardians of Anderson. Teachers, I want to thank you very much because this is not my first time to come to this school. I did come accompanying the former minister for, for this ministry to come and see this school when Midlands has said or selected it as a school with commercialization projects, projects that are worthy of note by the Honorable Minister. So we want to congratulate you for having the ministry coming over and over. 
colleagues from the media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not in any of those categories, comrades and friends, I want to greet you and welcome you to this beautiful occasion. I'm highly honored to have this moment and officiate at Anderson High School as you receive the ministry's highest accolade that is given to any school for outstanding performance, which is the Secretary's Merit Award. It is through your hard work, your unity and tireless effort that we are all gathered here celebrating with you the fulfillment of your vision. And Mr. Mkuse, who is the director in charge of human resources, when he was giving his introduction, said I started off as, and I will quote, an ordinary teacher, close quote. Shamari, apana chinonzo ordinary teacher. Our profession is not a profession of ordinary people. We start as very wonderful teachers. That's why children and ourselves came through the systems anyway, where we went to school. So there's nothing ordinary about, not just in teaching, we do, we do have that tendency of saying you were once an ordinary, whatever, and then you rose. No. We are all super professionals. Right from the time we come in, that's why our country's education system is one that is envied by many. It's not an ordinary teacher who actually gets people clamoring for the teacher from Zimbabwe. At least you are not a, a, a teacher of Chirungu, so you are forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> the Secretary's Merit Award is both a quality control supervisory tool that recognizes schools of excellence, as well as a motivational strategy that spares those schools to keep on moving to better standards. The head of this school won a Secretary's Award, as he told us, when he was at Nyahuni. And today he's doing a repeat performance. If I am not mistaken, Nyahuni didn't forget the record you set. Because they are part of the teams that we are, schools we are going to be awarding. So whoever took over from you, Yes, you can stand up. So we'll see you. So the Nigerians are correct when they say the fish begins to rot at the head. So if you a head who was rotten had followed you, Nyahuni wouldn't have. So you had set standards, the head who got there continued and maintained those standards. And we want to appreciate you for that. That's what a champion head does. So through the Secretary's Merit Award, we honor, we recognize, we applaud achievements by our learners, by the parents, by teachers, and the leadership at the school level and even the responsible authority level. If all those were not working together, we definitely were not going to be here. Therefore, I want to congratulate you and say, I'm Flope Makorokoto for winning this award. We want to congratulate in an individual, at an individual level, the head, Mr. Mukaswanga, for winning the award yet again. 
And we want to thank you for the leadership that you are exhibiting that continues attracting the ministry to come here. Key attributes that have led to Anderson lending this prestigious award include the creation of a child-friendly environment, a consistently high pass rate, and we want to continue urging you to link the academic work to the world of work. There is impartation of life. Is it food? Is it wood? Is it metal? Is it uh, textile? Or whatever else? Or design itself in technical graphics. So we want to encourage us to be more relevant to our learners. Schools like this one, Anderson, which already have started, can already pick one or two areas to start working towards offering design and technology as a major learning area. In also speaking to the human capital development mandate that we have, we continue also to in try and increase the uptake of STEM learning areas science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But we also indicate creativity in all the other areas, the arts, which is why I was saying, why are we not accrediting or acknowledging the creativity that we saw in the music uh, of these dear girls and boys. So what we have done for science is to encourage responsible authorities, I'm happy that uh, the DDC is here and 80, over 80% 80 of our schools are owned by rural district councils. We want to encourage them to join us in our endeavor to convert classrooms into science laboratories, ordinary classrooms into science laboratories, so that we can more ably offer natural sciences, or what people at times wrongly call pure sciences. There's nothing impure in, the in all the other sciences. <laughs> so we want to say through the devolution funds, please can we target? Because every community needs its doctors. It won't have to wait for its neighboring community to bring or to create its own doctors. It needs its pilots, it needs its engineers, it needs all the professionals that it needs for its socioeconomic development. So we have to very aggressively start working as communities to push the teaching of all the learning areas that lead to whatever professions we are talking about. We are also encouraging the blueing and greening of our schools. Blueing meaning water provision. And through water provision, we then want to go green as schools. I'm happy this is one school that is very green. And what is even encouraging us is that they're not only green in food production, but they're also green in making sure that they are forested and we are living in very good harmony with nature. They've gone even a step further to look at green energy. Currently, government is solarizing 150 schools throughout the country as part of greening, as part of renewable energy. And we would want to commend this school for solarization, and especially for your ability to feed power into the national grid and therefore reduce your cost of power. All the other schools, all the other authorities, again, I appeal through UDDC in standing in for the secretary to challenge my colleague and the devolution structures that not only do we need solar energy or whatever other biogas energy, we we don't just need it for lighting. As we are talking, working in the e-space, as we are talking e-learning, 
as we are talking resilience of education, we need power as an enabler. Then later on, we can talk about connectivity through the technicons, but we really need power and renewable sources of energy. I've seen that in this school we have the green energy and a bit of our uh, dirty energy in the gas, sorry, in the generator where we depend still on fuel that is uh, not very clean. But they have all the options you could think of to make sure they stay powered. The review of the curriculum. We have gone seven years into this first cycle of the curriculum, but when we started and came up with the curriculum, there was no COVID-19, there was no cyclone in life. We are learning now that there are new things that came in which we have to take on board. When we were doing that curriculum, there was no cryptocurrency. There was no, uh, what do you call it, what, these coins which ring red bank is selling to some of you who have money. They were not these. Old coins, yeah, they were not there. You see, I don't know about them, but they are not even remembering the name. There were no gold coins, there were no so many things. There was no. Njengu. You know Njengu, you know the Chimbra in some parts of the country. This very cheap beer that costs very little but knocks out our children. There was no children getting stuck. We never knew that we were going to stick. I'm sad. You are lucky. You, you get to say to a child who's been totally out for 48 hours or more. And when you ask them, Ah, ah, mother, and a stick. Say, ah, what got you unstuck then? <laughs> Amen. But all these challenges were not there. So the curriculum now is to look at those things. On my way this way, I received a note from a parent who was saying, what are you going to do, Madam Tabela, about schools? Some of your children were found in <coughs> some joint vaporing, uh, using your daha, your some of those things I don't know, I learn now. So, and then I just said to myself, can that question be asked to Mrs. Tavella? When we have 4,600,000 children, it's a societal question. All of us have to be asked that question. Because these children who are doing that come from a home. And when they left home, what was mom saying? What was dad saying? So that burden cannot be education, sorry. Cannot be a burden for education on its own. Yes, we can be looked at as the custodians of education and be asked that question. But as I'm saying, the debate has to start at home, in the community, in the church, in every place where we meet, to say, how can we save our children? And as we do the curriculum review, we are inviting views from all of you, especially about that. Issues of mental health, how can we deal with that? Parents and children are no longer able to talk to each other. One little grade four child sent again a message, uh, a poem which was sent to me from that grade four child. And she was saying, technology, technology, I hate you. Because you have taken away my sister, my mother, my father, my brother and my sister. I go home, dead, I try to say, daddy, this is, I'm going to disturb you. I'm going to disturb you. 
I leave daddy, I go to mother. And mother says, Yiwe. Did you go to group of church? Did you go to discuss a Bible study? Then I go to my brother and he says, Eh, 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 eh. I was going out in the research. My sister was, she would just tell me, get off, you are a pain. I go to the teacher now, to the maybe Kuchkoro teacher will help me. And the teacher says, Hey, I gave you homework in the garden, I want to go gula. So this child is now saying, so which human being am I going to work with, talk to? Which human being am I going to take the, tell my pain, tell the things that confuse me about life? No one. So as a society, but let me say as parents, can we reclaim our role of helping these children grow, of training them, the Bible says, in the way that they should go. So that even later on, when they are trying to be naughty, they will say, my mother, if she hears this, what will she say? Or when they are being naughty again, and then they will be the first one to say, shh, shh, to everybody. And when someone says, why are you saying she in church? Yeah, my mother is a talking eye. She was looking at me. So let us get those talking eyes. Let us talk around with our children. Let communication start. And we move on. So join us as we review this curriculum and proper suggestions and solutions from where you are, how we can better shape the second cycle. I want to also make uh, you aware of the fact that government continues to help us with the efforts of recruiting teachers through the Public Services Commission. <coughs> Currently, they are finalizing what we call attrition posts that were left by people who either died or transferred or whatever. But we have been given permission now to recruit about 2,500 teachers for this. So those who are who have aspiring teachers at home, please make sure they are registered so that they can be considered in the soon to be.